In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thank you all for joining the meeting today. Uh, this evening, Marianne, Marianne uh, Abdel Malik uh, is talking to us on a very interesting uh, topic, uh, Coptic icons as windows into heaven. I'm sure you all, you all like the Coptic all over the walls in our churches. And it's time to, this evening to know uh, some meanings about the Coptic icons, to know how to understand this and how to benefit from these icons and what do they stand for in the church. Go ahead, Marianne. Thank you, Abuna. Um, hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? I remember some of you from Mahragan in the summer, and I'm happy to be with you here again. Um, if anyone is comfortable to turn your screen on, please do. Um, I'd love like to feel the interaction with you. And if anyone wants to say something, comment, ask a question, please be completely free and comfortable to do that. Okay, the topic of Coptic icons. Um, for a very long time, I used to take Coptic icons as kind of for granted. I used to go into the church, um, appreciate the beauty and the order of the Coptic icons, um, but I never thought that there was actually uh, spiritual meanings be behind every single icon and um, behind the idea that icons are even put into the church, why they are put into the church. And uh, one time I was listening to a sermon and the speaker um, wasn't really talking about this topic, but through his talk, he, he mentioned a, a symbol in the icon of uh, our Lord Christ. And um, I was really um, surprised and amazed that um, something we see every day actually has a lot of meaning behind it. And I started growing um, really interested in this topic, and I hope that um, maybe we can learn something about it together today. Okay, we can start off by uh, reading a passage from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 12, uh, verses 1 to 2, and I'd like to ask um, any one of you to volunteer, please, to read these two verses for us. Anyone ready or willing to read them? John, Joy, Jolina, anyone? <clears throat> okay, how about I call on John? Can you read it for us? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so, so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside uh, every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares in, in us, ensnares us, and let us let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thank you so much, John. So I want you to focus on surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. And as we talk about Coptic icons, we are going to understand how this verse relates to the icons of the saints and um, other um, events from the Bible represented in these icons. Okay, this is a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. First, uh, a brief history of Coptic icons. Um, origin and meaning of the word icon itself and icons in our Coptic Orthodox faith. And then we're gonna talk about symbols in the icons. We're gonna uh, see some examples of icons that we see in the church around us. And lastly, we're going to see how this 
applies to our life and what icons can me mean for each one of us. Okay, a bit of history about Coptic icons. <clears throat> they are actually a continuation of ancient Egyptian art. I'm sure all of us have seen some form of Egyptian art. And there are aspects of ancient Egyptian art that we can see in uh, early Christian icons. And I show me, I'm showing you here one example, which is the ancient Egyptian image of judgment. On the left here, we see the idea of a scale that people's uh, deeds and their acts are being weighed, whether good or bad. And on the right hand side, we see an early icon of Archangel Michael, and he's also carrying a scale. <clears throat> so we're seeing here a continuation from early Coptic art. Um, I'm going to do a quick poll here. I don't know if any of you have participated in a poll. It's very easy. I just want you to see the question in front of you on the screen and just choose the answer you think is right. When did Coptic icons start spreading? Uh, do we all see the poll on your screen? Okay, I'm seeing people starting to answer. <clears throat> um, we have three people not answering or I guess this is, um, okay, two people left. Maybe that's your computer, Abuna, so I, I shouldn't count it. Six out of eight people. Okay, let's share the results. <clears throat> um, do we all see the poll results? So um, some of you answered when St. Mark came to Egypt, but a majority answered around the third to fourth century AD. Okay, <clears throat> so actually that is the correct answer around the third to fourth century AD. And the archeologists, those are the people who dig around for old artifacts and ancient monuments. They date the Christian icons back to the third century after Christ or AD. And this is the time of Emperor Constantine when he started reigning the Roman Empire, and he officially recognized Christianity in all the empire. And Coptic Orthodox Christianity started spreading really fast in this period between the third, the fourth, and until the seventh century. Okay, so why did, why did icons spread in this time? because many believers who joined the Coptic faith were illiterate. They couldn't read or write. There were very few um, manuscripts of the Bible and they couldn't understand the spiritual meaning, the history of the church, or even the events in the life of Christ or the Bible. For that reason, the church started allowing the use of icons to help people understand Christianity and also the doctrine. And we have one of our early popes, Pope Cyril I, and he permitted icons to be uh, drawn and hung up in the churches of Egypt. Okay, we're going to move on to the meaning or the origin of the word icon itself. Actually, when I researched a bit about this, I found out that it, it has a Greek origin, which is icon or the Coptic word iconigo. Uh, Abuna, tell me if I'm pronouncing it right. Sorry, we, we say it icon or hikon in Coptic. Okay. So icon and sometimes for the hissing sound at the beginning, we add a hori, which is like H at the beginning. Hikon. Okay. 
Hikon. Okay, thank you. And in the Greek Bible, this uh, word Hikon or Ikon comes in the Old Testament in a number of verses. And one of these verses is, then God said, let us make man in our image. So image here was in Greek, Akon. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. So when God created Adam, he wanted uh, his image to be seen in Adam. We can't see God directly, but by seeing uh, Adam as originally created um, without any sin, we should be able to see God. Okay, another thing to, to bring this meaning closer. The burning bush, if we all know the story of the burning bush, which uh, Moses the prophet saw in the wilderness, we all know that this is an image of the mother of God or the Theotokos. That's what our church teaches us. And when Moses wanted to come close um, to this burning bush, God said to him, put off your shoes from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. So again, the idea that there is um, an image representing something greater and something bigger behind it that we can't see. The burning bush um, was a symbol of God becoming incarnate or being born from St. Mary, but Moses couldn't actually see this um, other than the burning bush in front of him. Then we come to the New Testament. The word image also came in this verse about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was described as the image of the invisible God. No one could see God, but we saw him in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the incarnate God, and we all were able to see him. So here I put this kind of equal sign icon is a spiritual image, not a physical image. Whenever we see an icon, we should remember that we are looking at something spiritual, not just a physical um, uh, picture that is uh, drawn beautifully in front of us. Does anyone want to say anything or ask a question or comment? Okay, I'll move on. <clears throat> so whenever we meet an iconographer who are the people who um, are like experts in, in this art, they tell us that icons are written and they are not just painted by them and we read them and not just look at them. This is because uh, they use a lot of symbols and a lot of tradition from our church. And so it's not just the art of it. It's all of these symbols and spiritual meanings behind them. They can tell us a story about a saint, a martyr, a holy event. And actually, um, I had the opportunity to speak with an iconographer who is here in the United States and she's the one who, who gave me this phrase, windows into heaven. When we look, look at an icon uh, with God's grace, we are uh, looking through a window to heaven. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull up another poll, if that's okay with you. Um, this is, sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to find my second Okay. This is another question for you. What is the difference between icons in the church and the ones in our homes? Either they're the same, icons in the church are consecrated with the Holy Nairun, Icons in the church are painted in a special way. Please choose the answer you think is uh, the best. Okay. 
okay waiting for a few more people to answer. We have six responses now. Okay, I guess six is all of us. Oh, seven answered. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's share the results. Um, yeah, the majority of you answered the second one. Icons in the church are consecrated with holy my room, which is I can't the see the polls on my screen here. Oh, uh, you mean the results or the actual question? Either. How about the rest of you? We, they come for us. All of you, John, Julina. Yeah. Yeah, where where do they come, uh, Stephen? They when the when she enables them, they pop up instead of like the the slideshow. Now uh, this doesn't happen in, uh, here on my Maybe screen. Maybe Abuna, because you are a host also, so it's showing for participants. Yes, maybe, and because and maybe because I'm streaming. Oh, okay. Okay. Any anyway, I'm enjoying it. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so we shared the results. <clears throat> okay, icons in our Coptic churches, like uh, most of you answered correctly, icons inside our churches are consecrated with the holy Myrun oil, exactly the same as the vessels, the 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 cup which holds the blood of our Lord, the pattern which holds his body and all the vessels used in the holy services. I, I found these lovely two pictures on the right with um, our thrice blessed uh, Pope Shenouda consecrating some icons in a new church. Um, and for the higher icons, they have this special kind of um, um, I'm not sure, a stick or something so that they can reach with the oil, the holy oil to every every corner and every icon in the church. It's a roll, like painting roll, but used only for my room. Okay, Abuna, thank you. Okay, so what does the holy my room do? Um, the holy my room activates the work of the Holy Spirit in the icons. Remember when we are baptized and um, Abuna uh, also um, uh, anoints us um, with the Holy Spirit to become temples of the Holy Spirit. So the icons are now, they have the power of the Holy Spirit. It, they're kind of activated with the power of the Holy Spirit and they are representing our cloud of witnesses. Who is our cloud of witnesses? It's all the saints, our holy fathers and mothers who have preceded us to heaven. And through the work of the Holy Spirit, working through these icons, we can put aside every fear, every burden, every sin. Uh, this is the verse we, we read at the beginning um, of this talk. So, um, Let's think of it like all of us have a cell phone and we either have a Verizon or an AT&T network so we can connect and talk to each other. With the work of Mayroon and Holy Spirit, we have a network to heaven. We are connected to heaven um, <clears throat> through these holy icons. Now we're going to talk about a very interesting part in icons, which are the symbols um, that the iconographer or the painter will use. <clears throat> Unlike usual painting, for those of you who took art classes or know some painting basics, <clears throat> excuse me, the iconographer starts by putting dark colors first, and then they continue putting uh, lighter and lighter colors. What does this mean or what is it a symbol of? It's a symbol of the light <clears throat> that comes into our life uh, through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We were originally in sin. We weren't saved, but when Christ saved us, he brought us out of darkness into light. 
And this is exactly what the verse on the right here says, him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, and if you will let me do a third poll, if that's all right with you. Okay, this is a simple question. Do you think Coptic icons are drawn in 2D or 3D dimensions? <clears throat> okay, waiting for a couple more people. Okay, I think we have everyone. Okay, we have 86% uh, uh, chose two dimension and uh, 29 cho chose three dimension. Okay, let's see which one it is actually. Okay, Coptic art uses actually two dimensional um, uh, perspective when a painter draws them. Um, why is that? Because a Coptic icon isn't meant to make us react in an emotional way. There is no drama. There is no uh, attempt by the painter <clears throat> to make us just uh, like be um, <clears throat> so amazed by the beauty of the painting or the realistic dimensions, none of that at all. Um, the faces of the people uh, drawn in the icons are very peaceful. There is no feeling or emotion there, but just a holy virtues like love, purity, patience, and compassion. And there is no unnecessary details. They only give us very essential information so that we can focus on the beauty of this of the spirituality in the icons. Okay, I chose a few icons that we can talk about the, the uh, symbols in a bit more detail. There's a whole wealth of, of these symbols if you are interested and want to learn more. First of all, the icon of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, he is always uh, drawn as facing us like the verse tells us, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. And if you look on the right side, I'm showing a hand of the Lord Christ and the fingers are kind of uh, drawn in a specific way. His right hand is actually shaping the letters of ECXC or ICXC which is an abbreviation for the Greek word Jesus or Isos and Christ Christos. So where is that? We can see here uh, the small finger is like an I, the ring finger and the thumb is like a C, and then the middle finger and the forefinger are like an X. So I, C, X, C, Jesus Christ something else, the ring finger and the thumb are coming together, which represent uh, the unity between Christ as a human and as God, a, a unity of the divinity and the human nature. Another icon, that of the crucifixion. This has, is full of meanings also. So we see uh, Christ's arms are open on the cross because by his own will, he was crucified. No one forced him to be crucified. If we look at the bottom, St. Mary, St. John, uh, St. Mary Magdalene, we can't really see much suffering in them because that's, what, that's not what icons are, are trying to show us. They are trying to draw us to the spiritual meaning that these are very faithful people who followed Christ onto the cross. Okay, at the bottom here, we see this uh, cave-like area and there is a skull under it. And tradition of the church tells us that Adam 
was buried in the place where Christ was crucified. So Christ is saving Adam, but another meaning, Christ is the second Adam, because through his death, he rescued us all from sin, and he was able to create us um, into a new people with a new uh, nature. Something else in this um, icon, we see a kind of like a triangular shape between uh, the Marys, Christ, and St. John, uh, a symbol of the Trinity. And then the Holy Cross is uh, bisecting the middle from earth up to heaven. Um, and we remember the verse which Christ says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Something else interesting I, I didn't know for a long time is that um, evil people such as the left-hand thief, Judas Iscariot, they are never shown with their complete face, only their profile or one side of their face so that we do not uh, think too much about them. Um, in some icons of the crucifixion, um, this plank or the wood where Christ's feet are on is shown as pointing upwards to the right, where the right hand thief uh, who believed in him and was granted to go into paradise with him um, is also crucified. Okay, the icon of Saint Mary. Saint Mary is always shown to the right of uh, the Lord Jesus. Like the Psalm tells us, at your right hand stands the queen in gold. St. Mary's clothing is mostly blue. It may be other colors, but mostly blue and is covered with small stars. Why is this? Because she is the queen of heaven and the gate to heaven. Um, in the third hour of the Agbeya, we, we say to St. Mary, you are the gate of heaven. Open for us the gate of mercy. And something else about St. Mary's icon, if you see here, there are three larger stars on her two shoulders and on uh, her head. And this shows or signifies that she was a virgin before, during, and after the birth of our Lord, which is um, our faith of our church. We completely believe that she was a virgin uh, forever. And we see the closeness between St. Mary and uh, uh, her child, Jesus. And um, we also are able to receive this closeness because we take the Eucharist, we take a Holy Communion and can be united um, with Christ. <clears throat> okay, something um, widely spread in our churches is the, are the icons of the saints. And I have here St. Marina, uh, the patron saint of the, the church in Winchester. So we always see around the saints this golden halo, and it's a symbol of the, the life of light uh, radiating from the saint and also the holiness which they have always lived. <clears throat> and because the saints have completed their struggle, even if they were martyred, um, they they um, underwent very severe tortures. That is not usually shown in the icons, but we see them as victorious and joyful, not as weak or full of faith or, or full of pain, so that they can inspire us also to a life of holiness. Something else um, that we learn from the saint icons, uh, the ears and the eyes are kind of shown larger. There's not a lot of correct proportion in, the, in how the icon is drawn. But like we said earlier, that's not the purpose of an icon. Why are the eyes shown wide? Because they symbolize that spiritual eye looks beyond the world. It's looking to heaven, beyond everything in this world. And the large ears also are a symbol that ears are always listening to the word of God. Um, another thing, the lips of the saints are always shown as gentle, 
because they are reminders that we glorify and praise Lord, the Lord with joyful lips. Another thing, the head tends to be large because it shows us the saints are devoted to prayer and uh, contemplation all their life. Okay, um, lastly, what do Coptic icons mean for us? I have here a part from the liturgy that we hear in church every time we go. Can I have someone read this small part, please, in blue? Joy, can you read it for us, please? Yes, that we may become one body and one spirit and may have a share and inheritance with all the saints who have pleased you since the beginning. Okay, so that is our hope, to become one body and one spirit, so that we have a share and inheritance with the saints. And um, Coptic icons um, tell us that the saints are not far away from us in heaven, and we are here struggling and uh, experiencing lots of suffering and pain. No, um, their strength is our strength. Um, if, if some of you have heard of Abuna Lo Asidaros, who passed away a few months ago, he always used to say this word, we all have one bank account. The riches and the strength of the saints is also ours because we are one body and one spirit uh, with them. Okay, I have one last call to share with you. <clears throat> um, do we all know the miracle of moving Mount Mu'attam in Cairo? Did we hear the story before? Oh, okay, you are already answering. Okay, so um, before this miracle, St. Mary spoke to Pope Abraham from her icon in a church. So I want to ask you, was she speaking from the icon or from heaven? <clears throat> okay. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so the results are kind of close this time. 67 said from the icon and 50% said from heaven. <clears throat> okay, so actually St. Mary is in heaven. She was talking um, from heaven, but St. Mary is not unlimited. She can't be in heaven and on earth at the same time. But if we remember, we mentioned uh, the work of the Holy Spirit through the icon, making them um, exactly like our saint, the saint is in front of us. When we address them or pray to them, they are right there um, in front of us. Okay, something else about what icons mean for us. We also have these uh, pictures or icons in our house. They are not uh, anointed with Mayroon, that is true, but they are there for us. And so how can they help us? Um, another uh, very saintly priest from the 20th century, you may know him, Abuna Bishoy Kemil, he used to say this nice phrase, worldly images injure our eyes. Um, so when we go to, when we go into our room to pray and we close our door, Sometimes we're not able to close the thoughts and the visions and everything we've seen throughout our day. But um, if we cling to icons as a good help and a good support for us, we, we can overcome this, overcome the distraction and uh, all the interruption in our uh, hearts. Also this, like I like this quote from a, a poet, John Bon. he's not living anymore. Um, so he, he said, I throw myself down in my chamber and I call God and his angels to come. But when they are here, I neglect God and his angels for the noise of a fly or a rattling of a coach for the creaking of a door. So he even um, people throughout the ages struggle with this distraction and the inability 
um, to keep focusing on God, um, but with the help of the saints, through the holy icons, we can overcome this. Um, one last thing I'm sharing with you, I'm sorry if I took too long. Uh, let us remember that our the forefathers of our Coptic faith, they really suffered many troubles to preserve the faith for us and to, to give it to us at, in this day with no change, with no defilement, with, with nothing wrong in it. And um, this lady I spoke to, who is a Coptic iconographer, she lives in Maryland, and her name is Evelyn Rufail. She's actually a convert to Coptic Christianity and she had no idea about our church, but on visiting Egypt and on a Nile cruise, she started um, interacting with a Coptic person and she grew to love and become a member of our church. And I'll just read you quickly what she uh, wrote to me in, in an email. Coptic icons are part of Coptic heritage, every bit as much as other ancient Coptic traditions and contributions to world Christianity. The early church fathers who helped define and nurture what became world Christianity. <clears throat> the Coptic icons helped us define Christianity for almost 2,000 years. To turn away from them is throwing your own heritage out of the door. The Coptic church is worth more than that and deserves better. Um, so this is all I have. If uh, Evelyn Raphael is the iconographer who uh, drew the most of the icons in St. Marina's uh, church here in Winchester. Oh that's, beautiful. oh, that's lovely. I didn't know that. Yeah. I met her and her husband a couple of years ago. She's yes, fascinated I, in Coptic art. She is. Um, she, she loves it even more than some Coptic people do. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Marianne. Really uh, very interesting. And this is very good input and, and very good background about uh, icons. Thank you, Abuna. Pray. And you know, in, in, in Coptic tradition, icons which are anointed by Mayroon, the chrism, are like living, living creatures in our church. They're not just paintings. That's why we offer incense in front of them. We consider them a real presence of the saints. I really enjoyed your lesson and I hope you, um, uh, you, you, you present us more uh, insights into our tradition. I'd love to. Abu. Like this one. <laughs> Any questions before we leave?